guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the mountains, North Carolina. Today I want to take the opportunity to show you how to use Volvo's Vita software. Now, uh, I worked on Volvo's, unfortunately, for most of my life as a mechanic, up until about 2014 when I went and became more of a general mechanic. Uh, we specialized in Volvo's. I worked at a dealership and a private shop for many years. Anyway, Volvo Vita, yeah, this was uh, Volvo's OBD2 solution, now 96 to 98. They had the uh, VCS 2000 before that. They had, geez, I don't remember what that old uh, brick was called, but it was a great tool that worked all the way back to the old days. You had a breakout box and all that stuff. But this is what most of these modern cars are using, and that is the Volvo Dice unit. Now, this one is not Bluetooth capable, which is why it has quite a lengthy extension cord here. That goes to the computer above me here. The other part of this will plug into the car. Now on this we have firmware status, USB COM status, Bluetooth COM, obviously that's not going to be working today, and vehicle ID status. This is uh, most likely a Chinese knockoff, but it works just fine. You can find these on eBay, which I do kind of think it's funny that the Chinese are selling these knockoffs since the Chinese bought Volvo, so they're kind of defeating their own purpose, but whatever. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do now is switch over. I'm going to plug this into the car. I'm going to put it on key on, hook up a jumper box or a battery box to this thing so the battery doesn't go dead while we're playing. We'll pull some codes. I'll show you some of the uh, things that go on with Volvo Vita and uh, some of the functions you may or may not be aware of. If you own a Volvo 2001 through 2014, I would highly, no, 99 through 2014, I'm sorry. I would highly recommend spending the 60 or $70 to get the DVD and uh, and this dice unit on eBay, and you can get them even cheaper than that. I think I've seen it for like 50 bucks. Back in the day, this was many thousands and thousands of dollars, so uh, pretty good deal overall, okay? So give me a second, I'll hook this stuff up, we'll switch to the other camera here, and we'll do a close-up. I'll show you how to use Volvo's Vita software. All right, so here we go. We got Volvo uh, Vita Suite over here. We got Vita all in one, Vita on the web, Vita admin, and Vita configuration. We are just going to go with Vita all in one. We're going to double click that, and away we go. It goes online. Our username is going to be admin, and we're going to log in. There we go. Now, if you've never used this program before, be prepared. It is not uh, user intuitive. In fact, it is it's pretty crummy. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think they probably outsource the cheapest bidder. Sounds exactly like Volvo would be. And, uh, well, it performs about as such. But anyway, the first thing we're going to do is define vehicle. We're going to go ahead and we want to uh, select the dice. And we want to read the vehicle. And that's going to go out and it's going to read the vehicle. As you can see, the last vehicles listed down here will be here if there's a list of all of the cars you're working on. I've, I've been playing with this 01 got an intermittent problem with the O2 heater on this car, so uh, that's the only one I've been messing with, but that's okay. This is kind of a fresh install. All right, and here we go. It populates, which is kind of cool. Here's a picture of our car. We've got an 01 XC70 uh, and uh, engine side. We got, I'm going to change that because that's it. We got North America. International. Interesting. So we have the AW50 all-wheel drive. We have left-hand drive steering. Our body style is five-door sedan with a sunroof. And we're going to hit OK. Now we're going to go on to information. We can go into here and we can look at our parts catalog. Information is going to show us things like this. Yes, yeah, our parts. We want to order parts. If you're looking for a genuine Volvo part number to cross-reference on the Internet, well, here you go. Here's your pictures. Here's everything you're going to need to find. You know, I can click on that and it highlights that. It's very cool. I like that part. This part is actually nice. It beats going out on the web and trying to hunt down uh, random pieces. Okay, well, let me go ahead. And uh, we're going to go back on that, and we're going to go to repair, because that's got repair info here, engine. Let's see, we'll go to electrical system, battery mounting. This, I'm just going to use these as, just going to use these as general thing. I don't want to make this video too long, but here we are with some warnings, you know, right? But if we want to go back to repair and actually, uh, there's component location, but let's figure out how to do something, okay? Let me figure out how to uh, change the starter on this, right? Start or replace. Well, here we go. 
Start operation. Oh, starter switch replacement. Okay. Even more interesting. Remove columns. You know, it's actually pretty helpful. So again, if you're looking for what would be a printed manual, well, they don't exist anymore. So the Vita software is actually really good when it comes to this kind of stuff. There's pictures. You click on that link. Look at this. Um, oops. Exit out of that. Uh, we have our, our manual. We have our warning symbol. So that's kind of cool, right? Let me go one more time on another repair here, and then we'll move on to something else. Let's go to brakes. Let's go to wheel brake. Let's go to front wheel brake. Brake caliper front replacement. I mean, it gets pretty down into it, right? So pretty, pretty interesting, right? Installation. We got our installation. Pumping fluid levels. It even tells you using genuine brake fluid. So I like that part. Again, I don't really have any complaints. Having worked on Volvos my whole life, it's very rare that I had to reference the repair stuff. But for those of you who are working on your cars out of your own house, trying to save some money, which I definitely agree with, this is probably where you're going to find uh, the most use out of the 60 or $70 you pay for the dice and um, and the Vita software. So I'm going to move on here. We have design and function. We have specs. So if I'm looking for, if I'm going to do an engine rebuild or something crazy like that, or how about, no, you know what, I'll go with brakes. I want to know how, how uh, you know, when's the throwaway? Look at that. So here's our wheel size, minimal values. So there are some interesting stuff as far as brake disc millimeter, that kind of stuff. So there's, there's value there. Then we go into fault tracing. Yeah, you can do fault tracing, although I'm not sure I've ever really played with that. Again, anti-skid, so... Oh, wow. This is like the VCS 2000. Okay. So this is kind of cool. Does it have it? Yes, it does. Check this. Get my breakout box out. So, uh, very interesting. I haven't played with this in a long time. Again, you kind of just get a grip of what's going on, right? All right. Let's move on to bulletins. Will we have our TSB bulletins? We have, uh, um, manual updated bulletins, procedures, special tools, general tools. So a lot of cool stuff there. Recalls. If there happened to be a recall on certain stuff. So very cool there. Very cool. And then forms, I've never even touched. I think that's probably dealer-only information there. But um, I'm going to move on here to work lists. And this is if I wanted to actually bill assign a job number. And this would be if I were working at a dealership. So, again, this is not really uh, stuff that we need to play with here. But diagnostics. Diagnostics is where most of the people are going to be buying this software for. They're going to want to read specialty codes in the systems. No problem there. It's going to read the VIN, and now it's going to take a few minutes because it wants to go through, and it's going to talk to every computer on the car. It's talking with the SIM right now, Central Electric Module, but it's going to be talking to the ECM, the TCM, the REM. Look, and this is telling me that I've already read it, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to update. So it's going to take a few minutes, and it's going to go through, and it's going to take it. Look at all the stuff it's reading right now. I mean, it just goes and goes, right? Now, the newer the car, the more modules it has. Um, the last, like the 99 and 2000 model V70s, will probably have the least amount of computers. And obviously, anything, you know, 2012 or newer is going to have a whole lot of computers. But this 2001 model is actually surprisingly loaded with computers, not all of which are absolutely necessary. But Volvo, in their infinite wisdom, decided to throw computers in the doors and in the tailgate and all that other good stuff. So... What we've come up with is a full read of the VIN. So if you've bought a car and you're worried that uh, maybe the odometer's been rolled or something like that, well, there you go. Look at that. Uh, now I can tell my mileage is correct. Where the car was built, structure, chassis, I mean, the whole works. And here's my vehicle configuration. Look at that. I'm already having some issues here. My uh, voltage is low. I haven't driven this car much this month. Volvo V70, left-hand drive. I mean, it just goes on and on low pressure turbo so it's going to tell me things that i have available on the car and this goes on and on i'm not going to spend too much time here going through it but i do want to show you all that pretty amazing all the info that you can pull right off your car but this is where things start to get very interesting hey look at this wow so uh all it's going to look at all my computers here's my ecm design and function component location general tests right right here i'm seeing no code so no problem there tcm all right, everything's looking good. We do have a problem with the alarm not responding. So it is actually non-functional. It is not working. So we're going to want to figure that out. We're going to go to fault trace, and we're going to see what the codes are for these systems. Are there any codes? And they're probably going to be quite a few because these cars, 
Now they'll talk to each other and they'll have issues. Right now I'm on, uh, you know, the UEM, UEM siren code fault. If I double click on that, look at that. It goes right to my uh, fault tracing. This code receives a, uh, if there's no response and I am having a problem. So if you put, you know, turn on your car after a while and it says alarm, alarm signal or alarm code on the little digital display, that's what's going on. The siren won't work. Now you can actually turn these off. And this, one of the things I'm going to be doing is, uh, I'm going to be updating the software to ignore that alarm system in the future. Sometimes these alarms will go bad in a way that causes the batteries to run down. This one, thankfully, is not doing that, but, uh, you know, again, lots of information, lots of information. Disturbance less than or more greater than 30% high frequency. So we're looking at stuff like that. It's probably kind of cool. All right. But uh, let's go back to ECM. I don't know. I don't think there's. Okay. So here we go. Our initial state is going to show us all our computers. ECM does have a code leak diagnostic. So I've got an EVAP leak. I've got a uh, soft code. That's when it's orange. ECM rear knock sensor signal too high. I've got a hard code for front oxygen sensor bank one. That's that's the one that I've been fighting with. It's not the sensor. It's a wiring issue. I'm still looking for it. UEM not responding. It's just dead. That's why it says internal fault and command fault. There's cars were extremely common for these UEMs to fail. And then we have CEM saying, hey, I can't talk to the alarm module. And then uh, lastly, climate control module saying uh, temperature sensors faulty. So these are things I don't really care about, but they're there all there and you can click on each individual one if i wanted to try to fault trace that stuff right there i go there i go here's how i can look into it it's going to tell me what sets the code it's going to go off to possible sources actually it gave me nothing <laughs> so uh details and then uh you know again stats on when is it happening what what is the voltage when it happens how many times has the fault been detected Really interesting stuff here. So there is a lot of information that Vita gives you. So it's really kind of cool. Uh, we got into reference information. Again, that's kind of back to where we were. Uh, these are, you know, complaints. Are, am I seeing a, you know, this kind of an issue here? All right. So I won't go too far into that, but that's just if you're having a customer complaint that's saying, Oh my gosh, I smell something funny. Right. It's going to give you that reference. And then back to vehicle communication. We're looking at it. it. You can ask it to read again. I'm not going to ask it to do that. Now let's go into software. So uh, if this is a hacked version, there's no way you're going to be doing software updates on this vehicle. But you could, if you wanted to, uh, go to Vita and get uh, download your stuff. So here's my AM. I want to re remove my alarm system, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get rid of this. Initialized. Let's do it. I'm going to purchase that. Uh, we'll say it's... Uh, Oh, see, I can't do it because <laughs> I'm not signed up, but I would remove that from the system. No problem. I could do that. And uh, and that's how we go about adding or removing products using through the dice. So that that is exactly how you would go about doing that. It's kind of cool order for an independent workshop. So I can do that. Um, and I don't have it signed up, obviously, because I'm just a, I'm small beans here. I do small work on these cars. Uh, I'm happy to leave it at that. To be honest with you, I'm kind of tired of working on Volvos for a living, so uh, I only do it as a sport now instead of for real. And then we have a search function down here at the end, and I can I can search part numbers, I can search uh, TSBs, I can search for fault tracing, like, gee, you know, the car shuts off at 60 miles an hour and see if something comes up with that. So a lot of cool stuff there, but I'm going to go back to start. One more thing I'm sure you guys probably want me to do here. It's going to uh, look at diagnostics again, but I'm going to show you how to clear the codes which a lot of people miss on the first try and that'll pretty much wrap up the video because I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about the UEM today. And I know, no, I'm not going to update it. It's already knows what's going on there. So we'll go back to our fault trace. It's going to show me all my stuff here. And here's uh, and I find this funny initial state I'm going to go to. Here's all my stuff. And you're like, where, okay, where the heck do I, uh, where the heck do I, how do I reset all this? Well, for whatever reason, they put it down here at the bottom. Um, and you go to delivery, and then you have erase all and read all. So if you're if you just go to delivery, you're going to be oh where is it? Oh my gosh, there's no way to delete this stuff. But there it is. You can erase it all right there. So I'm going to do that again. It's going to go through and read each uh, computer here, and uh, just click OK there. It's going to read all those systems. It's going to delete all those systems. And now we're back. Look at this. This is what came back. This is what 
hard codes we have here. We still have hard codes. Now this rear knock sensor is yellow. Uh, so uh, very interesting. Let me go back here. I'm going to try that delivery again. Maybe I did not. Let's see. Erase all. Several DCs didn't do this. Information is not correct. So there we go. Ignition off. Start the engine. Turn it off. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to do all that. So <laughs> anyway, that is it. I could get into a video that takes hours and take the time to go through each and every one of these little things. I am not going to do that today because honestly, I'm just not so sure that um, I'm not so sure that that's necessary. I don't think all of you need to see all that. I'm going to go ahead and read my codes again, see what came back. And uh, and that's going to be it, man. I'll tell you what. Volvo Vita. Great program. Really confusing when you first get started with it. But uh, yeah, it works. And uh, you can work on any car. Uh, 1999. Through. Something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet. Liberty sows its seed at Far.